Okay, so let's talk about the soaring oxidation mechanism. This is a classical reaction that allows you to oxidize an alcohol into a the equivalent carbonyl. The reaction conditions for this reaction are you use DMSO, you use oxalyl chloride, so this is COCl2, it's a dimer. We're going to go over the, the structure in a couple of seconds. <clears throat> in presence of a base, which most of the time is triethylamine, we typically use dichloromethane as the solvent, and it's at minus 78 degrees. So it's a very mild reaction condition. Okay, so let's see how DMSO reacts first with oxalic chloride. So you have your dimethyl sulfoxide here. So it's a sulfur where you have only one oxygen that is doubly bonded to it. This, however, um, exists in a resonance form where you put the two formal charges on the two heteroatoms. So let's look at this. This would be dimethyl, again, negative charge on the oxygen, which is more electronegative. You still have the lone pair, and which leaves the positive charge behind. It's easier for us to draw DMSO always in this form because it's less cluttered with the charges, but really, Sulfoxides react mostly in this uh, form. So this is dimethyl sulfoxide here. It is going to react with oxalyl chloride, which is this reagent here. So it is a symmetrical reagent. It's called oxalyl chloride. It's a highly reactive um, reagent because it has a strongly delta plus at both carbonyls. And of course being delta plus it reacts like an electrophile. It's going to react with a nucleophile and the most nucleophilic part of this reagent is the negative charge on the oxygen. So it's more than delta negative, it's actually negative. So the nucleophile will react first, will attack the electrophile in its first step to generate um, this activated species. Uh, here, I'm going to draw the, inter the tetrahedral intermediate. And you still have the positive charge left on the sulfur. And the sulfur still has its two lone pairs. Okay, so now this negative charge here has the option to collapse back and kick this out, which would make the reaction reversible, and it is. Or it has also the option to eject another leaving group, in this case, the chloride. And if it does so, then it leads to this product. So methyl S still positively charged methyl and you end up forming a nester group at this position here. This is an oxygen. And you kicked out the chloride, so the counter charge is a chloride. Now, this is where a unique reaction happens. Sulfur that are positively charged, that are positively charged will actually um, allow nucleophiles to react in what is basically an SN2 reaction and displace the oxygen as a leaving group. 
and we'll see why this happens in a couple of seconds. If this happens, then you have transformed your DMSO originally in what is now a chloro sulfonium reagent. And this is the key reagent for this reaction. So what is the byproduct that we see on this side? Well, it's going to release this carboxylate as a leaving group and it's actually very unstable. So although this negative charge here is delocalized in this carbonyl, it will want to collapse and eject these leaving groups. This is a highly unusual cascade. Um, I'm not going to go into more details than this for this example. But what this leads to is you end up forming what is CO2. And here you generate CO plus the chloride that you kicked out, which really is the counter ion for this um, reagent here. <clears throat> so this is CO2, this is CO, so this, gener this reaction generates one molecule of CO2, it generates one molecule of CO, and so far that's what it does. Okay, let's go back to uh, now the original reaction. So we said this is the key reagent the key intermediate that is formed. This now will react with your alcohol. So the alcohol is nucleophilic because it has two lone pairs. Now this is again a case where a nucleophile will attack a sulfonium charge in what is formerly an SN2 reaction. What you do get out of this is now an activated alcohol. So let's look at this. You have H, you've added to your sulfonium, still has two lone pairs, and it still has three bonds, therefore it's still positively charged. The counter ion that we had here for this species is still around. And the chloride that you kicked out is the counter ion. You have an oxygen with three bonds, therefore it's positively charged, and you have the other chloride ion that is balancing this charge. So all the charges are balanced. The chloride will come in and neutralize your oxonium, and that leaves you now with the activated species up, 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 up. You've generated one molecule of HCl. And this is where the base comes in. So now your base can come in, which is triethylamine. So there's the first equivalent of base. So you have at least two equivalents of your base. Now the first equivalent will come in and quench the salt and will lead to the sulfonium. The other equivalent of the base will come in and pluck the hydrogen that we've ignored so far. So this was always present here, 
we simplified it and but it's still there so what it's going to do now is come around let's use this color it's going to come in pluck the proton the negative charge will come back form the carbonyl and because the oxygen already has two bonds and has two pairs of electrons there's one too many it's going to give back the two electrons that are sitting in this orbital to the sulfur so what do we get so we do get the carbonyl straight out of this reaction the sulfur species now is neutral so we have dimethyl sulfide it already had this two lone pair this one lone pair and now we've added another one so we neutralized it so we have dimethyl sulfide and this is a neutral species now see it's behaving like oxygen if we take a look at the periodic table sulfur is below oxygen it has the same electronic configuration and therefore when it has this it's two lone pairs it's a sulfur ether and it stays uh, it's very stable so we have the carbonyl we have this we generated two equivalents of your triethylamine uh, salt the first one quenched the HCl that was formed here and the second equivalent came and picked up that proton uh, and I forgot here that was so I forgot to the counter ion for this positive charge is this so it's still here all right so what we do generate in the end is a molecule of dimethyl sulfide plus two equivalents of trithalammonium salt so this is the fully balanced equation for this reaction so why do people like the sworn reaction co2 is a gas therefore it's going to evaporate co is a gas it's going to evaporate dimethyl sulfide is a stinky gas this is what you have in gasoline to detect whether you have a gas leak and you have a salt that crashes out of the dcm reaction so it's a very clean reaction there's many reagents the, the mechanism is very complex for this whole transformation but it's very sweet because you start from an alcohol and you get an, a, a ketone all the byproducts are gas that, that disappear you have one salt that will leave in the workup and it's very interesting so that was the swern oxidation